every time we have Jermaine on, it's, you know, we always try to like zoom in on the, um, on how important it is to leverage yourself and le not leverage, but to make sure that you're taking advantage of making yourself the best asset you can be in your business. So today we're going to zoom in on like how to read your credit report. So when you're dealing with creditors, typically you like to think the creditors are going to pull the one that's closest to you. But if you're a big institution like ourselves, we actually get make cut deals with the credit providers. So, you know, whoever has the best deal for the six months, the quarter, the year, whatever, that's who our flavor is. And right now, it's, so, you know, you would think what is being basically on the East Coast would be more of a transunion shop, but we're not. Yeah, because everybody's in like Chester, I think, actually. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Which is, which is we all like, but if you guys have like things on there that you want to ask Jermaine about, you know, that's what we're going to do today. So, um, when if, do you guys have like a council with TransUnion Experian or Equifax? Do you like, do you guys look at those at all? I, I have one of those, um, like the Equifax, um, you okay. know, one of those accounts, you know, where it lets you do, it gives you the monthly updates and all of that. I, I do have one of those. Okay, cool. Do you log in re uh, frequently? I do. I mean, I'm, well, I'm, I guess frequently is relative. Yeah. Um, I, I do, I do look at it probably every 60 to 90 days. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So that, okay. Yeah. That's uh, pretty, that's pretty funny. I'm, I'm going to tell you that's not enough. Okay. <laughs> that's what I was, yeah, that's what I was like. <laughs> yeah, let me look at it. So, so yeah, so, we, how often, so should it be like every month or? It, it should be every month. And if, and if you're actually using one of those particular services, you should actually set it up so the service actually alerts you every time there's a change. And, and the reason I say that is because it helps prevent identity theft. So now I do get those alerts. Okay, good, good. Just that I'm not going to lie. Every time I get an alert, I don't log in. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to ask you to please start doing that. Okay. Because, okay. because technically your actual, um, your credit report, your credit bureau, is just as important as anything else in life. Because as soon as that runs off, it runs off into the ditch, your financial growth opportunities cease to exist. True. So modern, modern in that needs to become top priority, especially for business owners or people who are seeking to grow their business or even maintaining things on the personal side as well. Because your, your credit report is truly the holy grail to be able to get you funding. I got a small story for you guys after we walked through this that just happened last week. Um, so, uh, Don, if you don't mind, I just want to go ahead and jump directly into what we have on the screen. Yeah. Because uh, yep. and what I want to talk about is if you look at this particular uh, TransUnion Bureau, you can see that it's actually broken down into sections. So the very top half, the very top section it's talking about you. It gives your name, your address, your social security number, date of birth, telephone number, those types of things. Some of those, and here's where I will tell you that you really wanna start making sure that you pay attention to, uh, because if anything is wrong in, in, in those fields, it becomes a, a, uh, a fraud alert could easily pop up when you go to apply for credit. Because if you put your current address as 123 Main Street, but on the, on the credit bureau, it has it as um, 789 Main Street. So now, you know, or, or even even a completely different address period as your home address. That's, that's very important that you make sure that your current address is up to date. The other thing that you're going to see typically in there is if you, uh, for, for some of the uh, people who are on the call, if you've been married or divorced or whatever, you could also have some aliases in there. Or if one of the creditors has reported your name and spelled it incorrectly. Um, that could also be in that, will be in that section. And then you typically will see your previous employer and also any uh, potential from, from previous addresses as well. Um, the one thing I also want to step back and talk, and then we'll, we'll just move on. I'll talk about it when we get a little bit farther down. Um, special messages, basically, some of that stuff is going to be a little bit harder for you to understand and read because you might see some hieroglyphics looking uh, commentations and things in there, because sometimes that, that's more of what we as uh, of, of the companies who are receiving the credit, you may see some things that have been put out there with regards to that. Because if you look at like those score factor codes, 
that actually means uh, that doesn't mean a whole lot to you. Go down a little bit, a little bit farther. Um, the slide to your right, um, right there, you see the score factor codes. That's more for us. Uh, that's not really going to help you a whole lot. Because um, sometimes when you look at your bureau, your bureau will not have the actual credit score on it. It will only have all the factors that make up the score, depending on it, the, what service of some of those online services you have. Because if you get their basic service, it may not show you the score. It may only show you the actual um, bureau itself. Then you got to pay a couple extra dollars to get the score. The score is very important. But here's the one thing I will tell you about the score. The score that you get is not going to be, may not be the score that we get. It could be up to a 20 to 30 point swing in difference. Um, because when we pull credit bureau, depending on what we're pulling for, we're pulling a different score. Uh, and if you actually go out to uh, Experian, it will show you a bunch of those different uh, variables based on if you're doing an auto loan, a mortgage, all those, all those different composite scores are going to be different. Um, so, I mean, that's, a, that's an opportunity for you to take a look at your score uh, on one of those things and, and then see if it makes sure it breaks it all down for you as, a, as the different categories. Uh, Dom, can you slide this screen? Uh, never mind, I, I was able to do it. Um, so the other thing that you will see in there, you see where it says high risk fraud alert. Again, that's something very important that, to make sure that you're not doing that. Some of the things that will show up for fraud alerts is if you've had, if one, if there's a, various addresses on there and some of the and different alias, al aliases as far as your name is concerned, um, or if you're, you will see some of that too as well when you're doing a lot of credit, hard hit credit pulls. Um, so you have to be very cautionary of, of applying for credit. One thing I will tell you that that is, again, a very nice to know when you're actually applying for credit, you try to do it concentrated. So what I mean by concentrated, if you're going to apply for a car, you need to be very specific. I'm going out looking for a car next week. I might shop around a couple different places and be very specific when you talk to the actual um, finance manager or the sales guy, ask the questions about, are they going to shotgun your, your credit bureau, uh, shotgun the loan out? And what I mean by that is by shotgunning, they're going to send it to a, a wide variety of different uh, 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 banks looking for financing for you, or they're going to be very small and deliberate. And I'm going to send it to the, the person who I know will get this approved for me. Um, the, reason, the reason that I caution that is because if say you start out today and you go to... Um, you go to the Honda dealership. They shotgun it to 12, 12 to 13 banks because most of the car dealerships deal with a lot of banks. That, that's how they make their money. Uh, and they're looking who's going to get the best rate and also who's going to give them some, some back-end participation on the rate uh, to make some extra money for themselves. Um, so you go to Honda, they send it to 12 to 15 people. Then you decide, okay, I don't want a Honda. I'm going to stop looking today. I'm done. So now you go back and you start looking three weeks later. Now you go to Toyota. Now, they also shotgun it to 14, 15 people. So what you have done in a matter of a, a three-week period, you have 30 hard hits on your credit. 30 hard hits on your credit because everyone's pulling the credit bureau. Unless they are using, unless the car dealership is using a system to where banks connect, they pull one and everyone shares it. Again, another important question to ask for those, those creditors. Uh, you look at the same thing if you're going around shopping for mortgages, um, everyone's going to pull a hard hit. So you, you have to be careful when you do that and do it in such a way that, again, is concentrated. So you're not, so if you're going to shop for a mortgage, you shop for your mortgage all in one week. You don't shop for it over the course of several different weeks and several different months. You got to be very specific, have a plan, and get it done at one, all in one shot, just to save yourself several hard hits. Because um, what you will find, and in, in, depending on who you read or listen to online, hard hits do hurt. Soft hits don't. Hard hits will drop your, your score um, five to 10 points for every single one of them. So again, you have to be careful doing the hard hits. And again, try to do them so they're concentrated. And, it, and it, so, so what happens is when you have those hard hits all in the concentrated thing, we know what you are shopping for. But when it becomes very sporadic and is all over the place, it just looks like you're running around town shopping for credit. And, and that's going to be a negative when we go to look for credit to do something else. So, again, it's very important that we understand that our, our credit is truly the holy grail 
to get us what we're looking for. Um, the next section is your credit summary. Basically, what all this is is where is the summation of all your all your revolving credit, your loans, everything is all constant, just basically aggregated into a summation. So if you look at this one that we're right now looking at, uh, it shows that revol currently revolving high credit is ten point at uh, ten thousand dollars, but the overall credit limit is eighteen two. So again, when we talk about that old utilization, that utilization just looking at that right now, I'm going to tell you is high. We tell you we want you to keep it below below 30% totally utilized, maybe 40, might stretch to 40. So if we look at that and see where they are, they're, they're basically, um, their utilization right now is actually hurting their overall credit. Uh, well, I guess it was, because if you look at the high credit was 10-1, but the current balance is 5-4. So again, it, they're, meh, they're right there where they should be with the 5-4. So evidently they pay, had 10,001 at one point in time and paid it in half. And their monthly aggregate payments is seventy, uh, two hundred twenty-five dollars a month in aggregate payments, and then your total available is seventy-one percent. So they're right now just trying twenty-nine percent utilized of their overall credit limit. Again, very strong. Uh, installment. Here's what I will tell you about credit revolving versus uh, a, 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 in, in comparison to installments. I would tell you right now that if you're in a situation you want the installment loan versus the revolving. Installment loans actually look better because it's a fixed a fixed dollar amount, uh, a fixed balance, and a fixed payment. But now looking at this one, the first thing that jumps off of this credit bureau, yep, yeah, you got it, Dom. Eleven hundred dollars past due. Now we asking questions. What's going on? Why why are you not making that payment? So that looks bad. Um, that's going to actually be very derogatory looking at that much past due because we're talking monthly payments of two eighty two, and we just do the math on that. That's telling us they, they four or five months past due. You know, so at that point, it's like, okay, so when I look at that, I'm thinking, okay, they at least 120, 90 to 120 days past due. So that's not like you just missed one payment. You've been you've missed several. So, you, made, so, you made decisions after that. <laughs> <laughs> so he's making some decisions. Well, well, because here's the thing though. If if it was a if it was a one-time 30 day or something like that on the bureau. We can say, you know what, that was just a, 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 a slip. I missed it. I was traveling, whatever, uh, in oversight. But when we go down to 90 and 120 days, we're talking three to four months past due. That was a conscious effort to not debate that payment. <laughs> so, so just think about that from your wallet. If you, if you, one of your friends come to you and you know they, they didn't pay the, pay the person down the street in 120 days, they haven't made a payment, and they say, hey, can I borrow, can I borrow a couple thousand dollars? Would you give them a couple thousand dollars of your money? Probably not. So that's the, that's the same way the bank's going to look at it. So then we look down at the mortgage. Um, the mortgage looks fine. It looks like they're making that payment on time. And we see, uh, it looks like they, they paid it down by about $50,000, which is which is very strong. Well, um, yeah, I guess we're closer to yeah, about $60,000. So it's very strong monthly payment of fourteen seventy. dollars Now, here's the other big kicker, which is very important to look at. We look across the bottom line, it shows all their totals. I can tell you right now, they got basically $2,000 a month going out. So we're, what that does for me, that gets me now working towards debt to income. I can't see income on here, but now when Mr. and Mrs. Klein come in, in this case, I guess it was just a, uh, it's, it's the, the, I think it was a female client, comes in and say, well, you know, I got $2,000 going out. So what I look at that with that $2,000 going out, now I need to see what her income looks like to set debt to income. So that's uh, now, <laughs> this is an ugly credit report. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just happened to notice down here with the public records, there's a chapter seven out there. Um, and, then, and then it looks like another uh, civil judgment that was paid to see is a bankruptcy showing that it was discharged. No, I don't see a discharge date on it. But anyway, there was a, there was a, a so, so what we look for on, on credit uh, on that section in public records, if you do have a, a credit, uh, I'm sorry, have a bankruptcy, what we're truly looking for is has it been discharged and are you at least 12 months away from the discharge date and have you reestablished credit? It's typically in a bankruptcy, basically you're wiping out debt, especially with a chapter seven, um, you're wiping out debt and starting over. But if it's a chapter 13, you're doing a, a restatement of debt to the point of, Hey, I want to take all my past due debt, make it a, a make it necessary, basically a loan is held by the trustee of the court 
and I'm going to make those payments um, to get myself caught up in 